Did you know that there are places on Earth where it rains fish? Welcome to Cool Facts TV, where we explore the most bizarre and beautiful phenomena in nature. Our journey today will take us from the mysterious rain of fish in Honduras to the glowing beaches of the Maldives. We'll uncover the secrets of the sailing stones of Death Valley and marvel at the underwater crop circles of Japan. So buckle up, it's going to be a wild ride. Stay tuned as we dive into some of nature's most incredible spectacles. Imagine stepping outside and having fish rain down from the sky. Sounds impossible, right? But it's a reality in a small town in Honduras. Let's dive into the intriguing story of Luvia de Peaches, or Rain of Fish. A strange yet fascinating natural phenomenon that occurs annually in Yoro, Honduras. Every year between the months of May and July, the residents of Yoro experience something truly extraordinary. The skies darken, a heavy rainstorm ensues, and when the clouds clear and the rain subsides, the ground is covered in a layer of small, silver fish. This phenomenon, known as Luvia de Paces, has been a part of local folklore for over a century and continues to captivate locals and tourists alike. So, you might be wondering how is it possible for fish to fall from the sky? Well, the scientific explanation behind this occurrence is as intriguing as the event itself. The most popular theory suggests that water spouts, powerful tornado-like columns of spiraling wind over the ocean, are responsible for this unusual rain. Here's how it works. During a storm, the water spouts move over the water's surface and suck up lightweight objects in its path, including small sea creatures like fish. These creatures are then carried within the storm clouds. As the storm moves over land and the rain begins to fall, so do the fish, creating the illusion of a fish rain. Another theory proposes that subterranean water currents push the fish up from the depths of the ocean, through cracks in the ground, and onto the surface during heavy rainfalls. However, the water spout theory is currently the most accepted explanation. Regardless of the explanation, the rain of fish remains a much anticipated event in Yoro. Following the phenomenon, the townsfolk collect the fish, providing an unexpected yet welcomed source of food. Truly, nature never ceases to amaze with its oddities. So the next time you find yourself caught in a downpour, look closely. You never know what might be falling from the sky. From raining fish to glowing beaches, Mother Nature truly knows how to put on a show. Now, imagine walking along a beach under the starlit sky, with every footstep igniting a ripple of light that fades into the darkness. As waves crash onto the shore, they illuminate, creating a mesmerizing spectacle of glowing blue. This is no fantasy or special effects trick. It's the magical display of bioluminescent plankton that lights up the shores of the Maldives. These tiny organisms, often no larger than a pinhead, are responsible for one of the most stunning natural phenomena on our planet. But what causes these minuscule creatures to glow like a starry night on the sand? It all comes down to a chemical reaction within the plankton, a process known as bioluminescence. When disturbed by movement, these plankton produce a protein that reacts with an enzyme in their bodies, releasing energy in the form of light. It's a defense mechanism, designed to startle or distract predators, giving the plankton a chance to escape. And when countless plankton glow simultaneously, it results in the breathtaking spectacle that graces the Maldives' shores. But this isn't just an underwater wonder. The phenomenon can be experienced on the beach itself, with the wet sand glowing beneath your feet, creating a path of sparkling light with every step. It's an experience that truly blurs the line between reality and fantasy, making you feel as though you've stepped into an otherworldly realm. The Maldives, with its clear, warm waters and abundant marine life, provides the perfect environment for these bioluminescent plankton to thrive. And while the spectacle can be experienced at various places around the world, the Maldives offers one of the most consistent and impressive displays. This glowing spectacle is not just a feast for the eyes, but a testament to the wonders and complexities of our natural world. Nature, with its intricate designs and phenomena, continues to astound us with its magic, making us realize that there's so much more to discover and appreciate about our planet. Who needs a nightlight when you have a glowing beach? Moving on from glowing beaches, let's explore a desert where rocks move on their own. In the scorched, barren landscape of Death Valley, USA, a peculiar phenomenon has puzzled observers for decades. Here, hefty stones, some weighing up to 700 pounds, seem to glide across the desert floor, leaving behind long, winding trails etched into the parched earth. This enigmatic occurrence, known as the Sailing Stones, has sparked countless theories over the years. Some speculated that magnetic fields were responsible, while others suggested that strong winds could somehow move the rocks. A few even entertained the idea of extraterrestrial involvement. Yet, 
None of these theories could fully explain how these massive stones could sail across the desert without any visible or external force. However, recent scientific investigations have shed light on this mystery, and the answer is not as outlandish as some of the earlier theories. In fact, the secret of the sailing stones lies in a delicate interplay of water, ice, and wind. When the rare event of rainfall occurs in Death Valley, water accumulates under the stones. As night falls and temperatures plummet, this water freezes into thin sheets of ice. Now, when the morning sun rises, it melts the ice into slippery panels. At the same time, strong gusts of wind blow across the valley. These winds are then able to slide the rocks across the ice, leaving behind the trails we see. This phenomenon only happens under very specific conditions, and even then, it's a slow process. A stone might only move once every three years, and its journey could span up to five years. But, over time, these slow, intermittent moves create the puzzling trails that have captivated our curiosity for so long. So, far from the work of aliens or magnetic fields, the sailing stones of Death Valley are a testament to the intricate and fascinating ways in which natural elements can interact. They remind us that even in the most inhospitable landscapes, there are still mysteries to be unraveled and wonders to be appreciated. Nature certainly has a way of keeping us on our toes. Next, we dive into the deep seas of Japan where an unusual artist resides. In the blue immensity, there's a spectacle that rivals any terrestrial wonder. Here, in the sandy seabed, you'll find intricate patterns of geometric perfection, akin to crop circles you might find in a rural wheat field. But these aren't the work of extraterrestrials. They are the masterpieces of a rather small but diligent creature, the male pufferfish. The pufferfish, while only about five inches long, is an extraordinary architect. Using only his fins as tools, he meticulously crafts these seafloor mandalas, some stretching over six feet in diameter. The process is a labor of love and a testament to patience, as it can take up to 10 days to complete a single design. But why does this tiny creature invest so much energy into creating these complex designs? The answer lies in the dance of life, the urge to procreate. These circles aren't just beautiful art, they are love nests, designed to attract a mate. The more intricate the design, the more likely it is to catch the eye of a female pufferfish. The centerpiece of each circle, a carefully arranged pile of fine sand particles, serves as the stage for the female to lay her eggs. The outer rings, with their radiating furrows and ridges, aren't just for show. They play a vital role in protecting the eggs from ocean currents, helping to ensure the next generation of these underwater artists. So, in the grand scheme of things, these underwater crop circles are much more than just patterns in the sand. They reflect the pufferfish's instinctive drive to survive, to procreate, and, in its own unique way, to create something beautiful. The wonders of the deep sea never cease to amaze, and in the humble pufferfish, we see an artist, an architect, a protector, and a lover. It seems that nature's creativity knows no bounds. As we wrap up our journey through nature's oddities, we'd love to hear from you. What do you think about these marvels of the natural world? Did the fish rain in Honduras leave you baffled? Were you enchanted by the glowing beaches of the Maldives? Or perhaps the sailing stones of Death Valley left you scratching your head in wonder? And let's not forget the underwater crop circles of Japan, which are a mystery in their own right. We're sure you've got thoughts, questions, maybe even a few hypotheses of your own, and we'd love to hear them all. And of course, if you have come across any other strange and beautiful phenomena in your own explorations of the world, we're all ears. Our world is full of wonders, and who knows, your discovery might just be the next feature on Cool Facts TV. If you've enjoyed this adventure, don't forget to give us a thumbs up. Every like helps us bring more of the world's wonders to you. And share this video with your friends, your family, anyone who you think would appreciate the awe-inspiring oddities of our world. Last but not least, subscribe to Cool Facts TV. We've got a plethora of intriguing content lined up, and we wouldn't want you to miss out. Remember, there's always more to learn and more wonders to explore. Stay curious with Cool Facts TV.